What's going on guys, TG or Thunder God here today doing a pretty interesting video, a bit of a new series on my channel. I kind of picked this up from watching some Sixes videos. My boy Virtual also did a video on this, which is kind of the inspiration for it. My boy Miso also did a video on this. Um, go check him out. He's a smaller YouTuber and, you know, he asked me to look over his video and I don't, you know, we agree on a couple things, but I don't want to just sit here, you know, get a little bit of inspiration from the topic and just not credit, man. So go check him out if you want to see his video. It was really good. Today I'll be doing You Red Sasuke vs. Killer Be Wrong. And the reason for this is that I just find myself in a lot of videos going over a lot of fights and explaining stuff. So I figured why not just make this a mini, a little mini series. I can just get more in depth. Um, you know, you guys get some variety in the content. It just seems like a win-win. I provide the sauce, you dip it. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I'm going to be honest. But anyway, you know, if you want to see more of this, definitely show me your support down below by liking the video or subscribing or just, you know, I, I don't know, just click something. But anyway, let's just get to cooking. So starting off, some of the things I want to discuss about this fight. We got to actually discuss some pre-fight stuff starting off. Uh, the main thing to know about Taka vs. Killer B is that when you look at Sasuke specifically, he is physically weaker than heavy Sasuke. Jugo notes this, that by the time of the end of the fight, Sasuke is shown to be quite affected physically, not having recovered from his battle with Itachi, along with having lost Orochimaru's curse mark, which people also don't mention made it so Sasuke kind of had to revamp his fighting style. As the last two years or so, he had the curse mark incorporated into his fighting style with the use of partial transformation, or just like curse mark stage two and even though you could make an argument that the ms did boost his power especially going off the data book statement that talks about with his ms his stats are bound to grow even more this is just really loose so it's much more consistent to say he's weaker than uh physically with heavy sasuke with potentially some stronger jutsu with his ms so he's just a different fighter weaker physically different arsenal a little bit something that people never point out as well with killer b is that he actually gets done with a training session before him and taka fight and we actually see like during his training session, he's using the complete A-Tails form. So it wasn't somewhat of a light session, you can argue. Um, B also notes that when he goes full A-Tails, it does drain his stamina. So you may actually be able to spin some level of fatigue on B's end, which may put a lot of feats on the Taka side into question. Now we start out with Team Taka and Sasuke going into the fight with the mindset of capturing B, this in mind. We see Sugetsu get disarmed and matched in strength with Jugo just blatantly getting taken down. Sugetsu noting B's ability to wield the Executioner's Blade so smoothly is a sign of just his raw physical strength. Sasuke then remarks that he'll be the one to take down B, Sasuke performing much better than his teammates actually being able to tag B with a kick, as opposed to his teammates who just combined efforts made B bite his tongue as, you know, th th that's, that's all they could really manage. So, after dropping the Executioner Blade, B proceeds to write down some bars for later, which actually plays into a theme in this fight, that being B is not taking the fight as seriously as he should, and we're going to talk about this uh, a little bit more in a bit, but you can also see this with how he interacts with Kisame, where he's much quicker to jump up to his Bijou forms after gauging Kisame's reaction speeds compared to here. On top of this, I can't lie, it's pretty funny and disrespectful to just start writing bars when you're faced with a group trying to kill you, but for those who like say like B wrote bars mid-fight, he didn't really, this is like still before the fight really began, so... It's disrespectful, but it's not like he would have just done this to like Sasuke shooting a Matarasu at him or anything. Regardless though, B puts the notebook away and takes stance with his seven blades. Now, it's here that we get into this base B versus Sasuke, and we see that B attacks Sasuke with a flurry of unorthodox moves, with Sugetsu noting that he can barely read his line of attack. In the manga, actually, Sasuke does pretty well here, deflecting and parrying off B's onslaught while still being on a back foot, which does display that Sasuke is actually able to somewhat hold his own against B here. The anime makes this way different as this isn't just B using a direct line of attack. It's actually just him flying around Sasuke and, you know, actually gaining, getting multiple gashes on Sasuke throughout the duration of his flurry compared to, again, in the manga where he's performing well, but just, you know, not instantly getting overwhelmed or maybe to the same degree. And to say bro is getting sauced up in the anime is an understatement. I mean, look at this. Get rotated, flip the patty. Wow, there go the mail. Bro is getting stun locked. He's out of subs. This is a combo. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad what the anime does to him. So the way I perceive this showing is that B is just trying to use the same technique over and over. You can see by the repeated lines. Uh, pushing Sasuke on the back foot due to the linear motion, attempting to break Sasuke's guard here, with Sasuke using his kinetic vision via the Sharingan to just parry off B's strikes. Essentially, just a mix of B speed plus unorthodox attacks are enabling him to just dominate Sasuke like this. With Sasuke more so just, you know, again, defending himself and just shaving off serious damage. But he does eventually just get blown back. After this point, Sasuke runs a Shidori in his blade in an attempt to shatter B's blade. Now, this is actually the first misplay of this fight that we'll see. And this is on Sasuke's part. There's a few points in this fight where Sasuke does certain options just strictly due to not knowing B had certain counters or abilities. 
and you really can't fault Sasuke for this, but it, it, it's one of those things where it's just like gathering intel and like not knowing your opponent's moves are part of like fights in Naruto. So, you know, this is one of those moments as B streams right on through his blade to counteract Sasuke's. It's here B that from a close range position just stabs Sasuke multiple times, which again showcases B's edge here. Now, Sasuke actually does avoid mortal injury here just from funneling Shidori throughout his body. After getting blown back, we actually see that Sasuke still able to perceive B throwing his arm up to block B's sword, which we get to intercepting. Now, Sasuke then uses Shidori to cancel out B's right on blade using what he just saw against B, which go slamming B from the side. Kerin then heals Sasuke with Sugetsu noting that the three of them have to attack B as if they were trying to kill him. So any restrictions have to be taken off due to B's strength. So any arguments holding back, just toss them, obviously. Pretty self-explanatory, it's stated. The manga cuts away for a time and we come back to this fight, everyone's in different locations, so some fighting did happen off screen. And we actually see that B is actively engaging Sasuke, Sugetsu, and Jugo and just not getting overwhelmed in any capacity, which just supports B uh, being above the three individually, which, I mean, nobody really disputed, but again, right, Sasuke's the strongest member here, and even he with a mixture of, like, stats and Sharingan precog was able to, like, shave off B's assault, being purely put on the back end, so again, this shouldn't really be too much of a surprise. Now, again, this is one of those moments where the anime just kind of changes this. Uh, the anime makes this so much worse as B is just Instead of like it just being this short, like back to the mid fight cutscene, B is just absolutely ragdolling the entirety of Taka. I mean, it's absolute domination, man. He's even grabbing Sasuke's Shidori and beating him up after comboing Sugetsu and Jugo. Who has performed this type of feat? Itachi and Ishiki. And what do both of those have in common? Just being undeniable tears above Sasuke. And this gets so much worse if you're under the interpretation of Shidori Amp's speed. So yeah, the, the, the anime definitely makes B look way more godly here. Whereas in the manga, again, you can imply like none of them were able to overwhelm him. So even together with like teamwork bonus or whatever you want to call it, didn't really make too much of a difference. After catching B using hydrification, Sasuke tags him with the Shidori. And by the way, this is probably boosted due to B just being wet. Pause. But B actually just tanks the Shidori. Like, there's no real, like, long-lasting effect at all, like, damage-wise. It just kind of momentarily stuns him, which is just a pretty good durability feat, honestly speaking. B, after getting hit with, by Jugo, again, taking no real damage, uh, escapes from the group momentarily. He also notes that he's done playing here, which, if you interpret him holding back here, is not good for Taka. However, it's more likely means that he's just gonna power up, which he does, in, like, an anime trope-like fashion where they're like, ha <laughs> play, play ha playtime is over. Uh, you know, kind of like that thing. Uh, B also calls talk a puny so from what we know so far he just really hasn't given them a reason to respect their strength we then see jugo launch sasuke straight at b's location with b donning his version one cloak aiming a larry at sasuke now there's a couple things i want to note here we see Sasuke use his Sharingan to evade B's Lariat, with B noting he's the first to dodge his eight tails form since his brother. We're going to come back to this later. The anime and manga differ here, as in the manga, Sasuke taps B's uh, head to maneuver himself out the way, whereas the anime, Sasuke just straight up does like a barrel roll and just dodges B completely. So the anime here actually switches up and favors Sasuke in this situation, as being forced to propel yourself off of someone's head using established momentum to dodge versus just straight up dodging somebody via doing flips just over them not even needing to make contact are two very different things with the latter being way more impressive now we already established that base b was already dominant against sasuke in the speed category so why does sasuke do well here well despite b actually having a speed increase when he uses the lariat uh he moves in a linear fashion with sasuke noting this this is why sasuke was able to dodge b it's a mixture of b being farther away plus moving linearly plus sasuke being able to perceive this linear attack which allowed sasuke to put himself in a position where he could propel himself off of B's head. This also makes it that this isn't really a standard feat and more of an aim dodging feat. Had B been in close proximity to Sasuke, like at the start of the fight in version one, Sasuke would not be able to replicate this feat. So I just do want to note that it, this is a good Sasuke feat, but you have to look at the context and not just look at it at face value. This is supplemented by Sasuke noting to Karin that he wants her to anticipate B's movements and relay his location. So Sasuke can use his Sharingan to avoid B's movements from a long range. An interesting side note that I've mentioned before, but B probably made his regular fighting style extremely unorthodox and hard to read due to his version 1 and 2 forms being extremely linear in the movements. As B in those forms predominantly attacks with lariats, so they just juxtapose one another. One is unorthodox, the other forms, while gaining speed and power, lose all the sporadic movements that throw their opponents off and are difficult to read in favor of a more linear hard-hitting moves. I don't know, I found that kind of cool. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. 
Something that also supports this like easier to dodge long range argument, which again, if I could like put it in perspective for you, it's like dodging a car moving 30 miles per hour from a farther distance than the car being like a closer distance in front of you and still moving at that speed. It's just going to be easier. You're going to have more time to react. If you also want to look at something else, Jugo also is able to move before direct be like directly gets to him from a somewhat close distance as well. So again, we we'll just kind of go back and support this, but Moving from this after B makes like impact with the rock, B attempts to rush down Sasuke, actually getting very close to Sasuke as Sasuke charges up his MS Genjutsu. Now, we actually don't know if by the time B like launched off, Sasuke began charging up and like needing the chakra for the Genjutsu, or if he just initiated it and it activated just when B got that close. You would never really be able to prove either, but again, you know, interesting stuff. Uh, and this actually is a good feat for Sasuke, albeit again on B who's moving linearly from a far distance. It's still pretty impressive. Now, this is another one. One of those examples where lack of intel had a cost in the fight as after sasuke had put b under this genjutsu he thought the fight was over obviously you know not too concerned with b behind him b then rushes up and hits him with a lariat sasuke was not made aware that perfect jinchuriki when they have a good relationship with their bijou partner their bijou partner can agitate their chakra and knock them out of genjutsu now granted sasuke probably wouldn't have had another option in this situation but you could argue like maybe he would have tried a Matarasu or something else if he really didn't have a choice. I don't think that's likely, but this Genjutsu scene is pretty much like a lack of intel situation, which again, you can't really blame Sasuke for, but deducing an opponent's arsenal is nothing new to Naruto, and this is just one of those situations to where, you know, this was, it, it just was a misplay. We just, Sasuke didn't know, Obito didn't warn him, even though he knew about Killer B being a perfect Jinchuriki, so, you know... Blame Obito if you're going to blame anybody. B being this close is just the worst thing ever for Sasuke. And obviously, he's not really able to do anything as B's way too close. He's going to hit him with that linear, fast, hard-hitting lariat. Sasuke gets his chest caved open. Now, I know I went on Sasuke a couple times for misplays. And again, they're not his fault. He just didn't know. But B actually makes the biggest misplay in this entire fight. That actually costed him technically the fight and almost his life. And we'll talk about this more in a sec. But essentially, in an attempt to stoke fear into Taka, and we know he's doing this because he's like, oh, I'm going to make you, sh uh, you know, shiver in your pants. He's doing this purely for flex. Goes into his bijou mode with the full eight tails. Now, before the eight tails actually rushes down at Taka, we actually have a good feat from Sugetsu, who's actually able to intercept full eight tails killer B and just repel him. He's in this like water bubble. It's actually referred to the Tate Eboshi, and it's just a giant jellyfish that Sugetsu can make form when he has access to a lot of water. And again, just being able to physically like mess with the A-Tails and push him back, especially when the A-Tails is rushing at the group, is pretty impressive stuff. There's not too much to say, though, as B hits Sugetsu with a Bijou Bomb. And I will say the fact that Sugetsu is not completely, like, you know, gone, obliterated. Yeah, his body's messed up. But yeah, no, it's not bad stuff from Sugetsu's side here. It's here Sasuke thinks about his team and how they helped him out during the fight, what they were willing to sacrifice, and reminisces about Team 7 unleashing the Amaterasu. Sasuke unleashing the Amaterasu on B is a good feat. Now, a few things I want to talk about. First thing, people don't know, actually, if you look at the panel of Killer B, he's actually blocking Amaterasu with his tail, so he actually does react to this. The reason this is also a reaction feat is because on the previous page, like right before the Amaterasu hit, we actually see that all the eight tails tails are like behind him, so he actually did have to move the tail in front of him before the Amaterasu hit. Um, and the reason I say this is because maybe you could argue, oh, he had the tail in front of him and it just obscured his line of sight. But no, we actually do know this is a cognitive move he did to block the attack. The Amaterasu also showcasing good AP by just singeing the eight tails hide. Nothing new here. But, you know, again, most people aren't aware of, like, the Matarasu blocking point. And in an attempt to, like, douse the flames, the Eight Tails launches itself in the water. It's here Sasuke cuts the Eight Tails tail to save Karin, eventually extinguishing the black flames off of her and the Eight Tails. B notes post-fight that him, you know, kind of putting himself in the, like, tentacle tail that was cut off was a spur-of-the-moment grand scheme with the Eight Tails chiding him that he literally sacrificed several of his limbs to pull it off. The Eight Tails also noting that B really didn't seem like he needed to call on him when he already had the upper uh, hand in version 1 against Taka, which is true. Sasuke was dead, essentially with a hole in his chest. B noting he actually got carried away here, which kind of went back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. So if B actually just launched himself with another lariat, there really wouldn't have been anything Taka could have done, with maybe the exception of Sugetsu like amped by the water, which B also directly notes. But B, if he did not pull off this strategy, would have actually lost to the Amaterasu. 
as because it was like a spur of the moment plan. Maybe you could argue B was like planning to escape regardless, but he actually notes even in the fight he wants to go home. So again, spur of the moment. Um, I also do want to make a note that B is actually capable of cutting off his own tail and doing this solo. He does it against Madara when he's getting sealed in the ghetto statue, but it's likely B learned to do this from this experience. So I wouldn't just say like he could have done this. So B actually misplayed by just making himself a completely bigger target as if he kept in version one, he could have just like removed the chakra that was burning similar to Naruto in the final Valley or just blocked it with like an eight tails tentacle with like partial transformation and just cut that off. So he really did not need to go full eight tails here. But he also notes it. He was winning. I got carried away. You know, he did all this to flex. And again, it almost lost him the fight. So B actually did make a pretty big misplay here. And it was really good on Sasuke for capitalizing it. And, you know, Sasuke didn't know that B was going to obviously separate into the tentacle. Again, he's working off such limited information that Obito gave him. So if I had to say, though, I would say Sasuke's misplays are less his fault as he was making misplays due to lack of information, whereas B's misplay was just strictly for flex. So Sasuke fought the best fight he could have, whereas B just kind of like played around too much, did all this stuff, which just led to him almost losing, if that makes sense. Something else I want to note post-fight that not too many people like know or discuss is that when Sa um, B actually says like Sasuke's the toughest opponent he fought, that's actually a mistranslation. Uh, the anime makes it a point to correct this. Um, it, this actual statement is Sasuke is the second strongest person B has fought. The translation is as follows out of all the guys i've fought up until now that sharingan is competing for about first place because he's strong which means that sasuke is just competing with the other person that b fought for like the first spot what killer b is implying retroactively is that the strongest person he has fought is a so b is saying that because of the sharingan of all the people he's fought sasuke is in the closest to the strongest so he's the closest to a sasuke is currently at number two at the bare minimum but because of his strength again it's comparable to the raikage now a lot of people jump on like this being in reference to Joni Minato. I'm of the opinion he's strictly comparing Sasuke to his brother. I say this for a couple reasons. Not only does B directly compare Sasuke to the Raikage, but something interesting is that Hachibi makes a note to B that Shinobi times are changing soon from like Sasuke's display of strength against him. Now, if you fast forward to the Raikage fight, Sasuke fights against the Raikage, and C actually makes a similar statement after seeing Sasuke perform extremely well against the Raikage. Makes a note that after performing well against the Raikage, he believes that Sasuke actually could have captured B. It makes a similar note that Hachibi made talking about Shinobi progress is still occurring in our Shinobi world. Both respect Sasuke's strength and acknowledge that he did well in his fight with both combatants. And because he's so young and did so well, it means that Shinobi are probably still evolving, which again, the implication here is it's pretty direct. Like you can't really miss it. Uh, the main thing people get stuck up on is that B technically fights Joni Minato, but Mieto's been dead for 16 years and B in his own mind might not even classify himself as even having fought Minato directly as we don't know any of the encounters they had following this. The Raikage is more so the one who directly combated Minato. Even if you look at the statement with uh, Minato crossing blades with A and B, with it being discussed that their military forces were mutually recognized, we have no idea B's involvement. He doesn't really make a note of it. He's never compared to Minato like this rivalry. It's always been the Raikage who's directly confronted him. B could have just sat back and let the Raikage fought. Or B in his own mind just doesn't classify himself as having a proper fight with Minato. So it's for these reasons that I just generally look at this statement as in reference to the Raikage. Which again, is pretty high praise honestly speaking. Now, what do I generally make of this entire fight? Well, I think a lot of people just downplay Sasuke's performance. As he actually does have to have a certain amount of relativity to actually be able to parry off and shave off a lot of B's attacks. Even with like the added bonuses that I talked before with like the fighting styles. Do I think Sasuke would have beat B? 1v1 no even if he had intel and you gave him like a perfect fight you would have to argue that he leads with the Matarasu and then b would just do what i described earlier and if you're gonna give sasuke like hypothetical intel as i saw some people arguing they do then just give b like intel on a Matarasu and make it fair so again right b generally really didn't have a reason to transform he was very dominant in that fight i think that's clear and I, i'll say this i think a lot of people miss the nuance of this fight as it's one of my favorite naruto fights and the reason for that is that you actually get to see a team 
work and function like with their intended purposes. Like Karin's the healer. You get to see support. Sasuke the focal point. He's obviously the strongest member. He does the best against B. It takes into account character oversight and, and continues what a lot of mid Shippuden fights do, which is just scoping out intel over and over throughout the duration of your fight in order to lead to like a win condition after concluding everything your enemy has. This fight also takes into account fighting style, elemental matchups. There's so much nuance to this fight and it's just so satisfying seeing Sasuke and his team actually work as a team against an opponent they cannot defeat individually. I don't know. I really enjoy it. I know a lot of people get caught up on, oh, Sasuke got slammed. It's like, no, nah, I actually think he does a lot better than people give him credit for. And a lot of the things that happen in this fight just generally aren't his fault or he should have been told about or he just didn't have intel on, which again is the name of the game, but it is true. A lot of Killer B's faults, he kind of played the battle perfectly. It's more so towards the end where he just made this extreme blunder that, you know, ended up working out for him in the grand scheme of things. But in terms of that fight could have actually costed him. So... This all coupled with the fact that Sasuke was physically nerfed. Yes, he had some stronger powers via his visual prowess, but I'm talking physically along with the stuff I discussed before. Sasuke really just did play the most perfect fight he could have against like a juggernaut godly character like B at this point, who quite frankly had a free win until he decided to flex. So let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Like, you know, if you did, subscribe even, you know, you could, why am I saying this like this? Uh, if you guys do want to see some more uh, videos like this, I have a lot to talk about with a lot of Naruto fights, which I think would help clear the air with a lot of stuff. But let me know. Show me your support on the video, all that stuff. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you thought, why, critique, I don't know. Bye-bye.